Hey there, Math Moment Makers. John here from Make Math Moments. And uh, if you've been liking our videos so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button uh, over here on uh, our, our YouTube channel. If you're watching this over on Facebook, head on over to the YouTube channel and hit the subscribe. We will uh, make sure that you get those new videos as they come out. And in this particular video, I want to talk all about teaching algebra and in particular collecting like terms and in the X's and collecting, you know, putting X's together, putting like terms together. How can we do this? In, in an interesting way because when I uh, teach this in, you know, I'm going to show you my background right here. So when I teach uh, this topic, I used to take a, a page like this right out of the textbook. And then I would say, today we will learn about, you know, solve or uh, collecting like terms. We want to uh, look at uh, collecting like terms so that we can make uh, expressions more simple and say we're going to simplify expressions and I would walk through an example just like this and I'd underline the X's and say, okay, this, you know, this X term needs to go with this X term. These are like terms and we can combine like terms. And when I did this, I found my students, like oh, many students in math class, in many different topics in math class, kids are saying like, why am I ever going to need this? Like, what is the point of collecting like terms? And so I, I vowed to change the way I taught collecting like terms and algebra in particular in my courses. And so instead, we want to bring out this power of why are we collecting like terms? Like, what is the big idea behind that? Like, what is the purpose here? Like, how can we bring this clear, make the, bring this more clear for our students to understand that there is power here in collecting the like terms. Um, I'm going to show you a couple, three activities that I use to bring this idea out and uh, shape the rest of the algebra unit or the rest of the ideas around algebra, uh, collecting like terms, which leads into sometimes the distributive property uh, and then more advanced algebra topics. So I'm going to show you three activities that I've been using in my class that I think answers that big idea of like, why, where's the power here? Because there is a lot of power in algebra, we want our students to recognize that. I'm going to uh, show you one clip right here. This is the first activity, this is called order up. And in this particular activity, uh, kids will see me do this and then uh, I'm just gonna be quiet here so you can listen. Yeah, big bigger shack. I got an order for a party. Got a pen handy? All right, here we go. Hamburger, Coke, fries, Coke, hamburger, hamburger, fries, fries, Coke, chicken nuggets, fries, fries, chicken nuggets, Coke. And so when my students uh, see this, they're, they'll be thinking like, what is going on? That's all I have to say to them is like, what do, you, what do you notice? What do you wonder about this clip? And kids are like, well, what's going on here? And, and they'll, they'll notice lots of different things. They'll notice that he ordered in this weird way. Like, and, and or you'll say, you'll, some kids will notice there's a pink water bottle at the back counter. Um, one kid, some kids will wonder, what is, like, why are we ordering in this way? Uh, what does this have to do with math class? And then the other notice that might, or the wonder might come out is like, what's what's the total here? Like, wh what's he ordering? Is he ordering for a party? And so the question that I can shape and push and, sh and mold into my, in for my students to work on here is what would be the total? If I had to calculate, if you think about the person on the other end, that big burger shack, they have to take this order. How are they writing it down? How are they to totaling up that total? What is the estimate like let's let's now estimate what is a total for this particular order kids will want to know some a little bit more information you can give them a little bit more information we have that we can show them the cost of each of these items now here is the wonderful part you're going to let them total this any way they want and so you will have kids naturally start grouping some of these together no one will order this particular way no one is going to actually take a chicken price, add it to a Coke price, then do a hamburger price. Kids are naturally gonna go, let me add up all the hamburgers, let me add up all the Cokes, let me add up all the, add up all the fries, and then we'll total them up after that. Naturally, kids will do that. And when you do that, you can talk about quickly, because I've got another activity to follow this, talk about quickly the power that happens when you group 
similar items together. And so as soon as you have that small, that small, uh, that small discussion about that, you hit him with a problem like this. You say, "Look at guys, I've got to, uh, I've, I've got to, uh, you know, get my attendance done over here, or I've got to do this. Can you just, uh, just figure out the area uh, of all of these shapes that are on this screen right now? Can you go ahead figure out the area of all the shapes, and you go and pretend you're busy for a moment? Uh, we'll get back to the, we'll, you know, we'll come back to this lesson." Uh, that we're talking about today, but give me the area here and kids will start to add up the areas. Now, again, no one is going to go, it's uh, that area, that tall rectangle up there is 10 times one. And then the one beside it is one times one. So we're gonna start adding all these up. They're gonna group them together. They're gonna quickly realize that there's a whole bunch of big squares. There's a whole bunch of rectangles and they're gonna group them together and add up the areas of those groups. And once they've done that, you can share some solutions. You go, what did, did, what did you guys do? How many of these squares did you get? How many of these rectangles? Let's see what those calculations look like. And then you can hit them again with another one. And be like, look at, look at this one. Let's, let's get the areas of these two different problems kids are going to start to realize that they actually those shapes are in the exact same position and we're getting them to see that there's there's some power here in two ways there's power here in in grouping like terms or similar items together to simplify and and speed up calculations and they're also going to see the power in representing formulas or expressions. Uh, if they can see that these two, these two different problems, problem one, problem two, have the exact same shapes in the exact same order, but we've changed the side lengths all of a sudden, uh, they're gonna say, look at I, I could try, like it's, it's really you know this many squares, this many rectangles, this many little squares. Well, it's the same number over here. And we could keep working with that idea to help formulate an expression out of that but we're not ready for that right we're not ready to all of a sudden throw x's in here yet uh, but we're working our way there kids are starting to see that there's power in grouping and there's power in simplifying expressions that's really the big goal that we want to accomplish here so we could move into a discussion about like what's the area of these three shapes what, what if i change it what are the areas of these three shapes and what about these ones right here? And they're starting to see some patterning happening here. What happens if I change the lengths here? And then all of a sudden, what happens if I write the lengths like this? Like, I don't know what the length is, or this length is X. And we could develop that the area of the big square is X times X, which we could represent as X squared. And this one might be X times one. And we're starting to build also up this form, uh, this comfort, comfort level with something we will use down the line, algebra tiles, to help do some simplifying. Then we can do another one where they build the expression themselves and then they can see the power in using that expression when we change the value of x quickly. That's that's the big idea, right? Like the whole point of us using algebraic expressions is to have power in simplifying things to speed up calculations. This is this is one of the big ideas that we use algebra for. And so once we kind of wrap our minds around that, we can move into a task like this one. Uh, which is uh, we call this Dora the Explorer, but I'm going to play this first clip here, which there's no there's no real much too much audio, but it's we're modeling a kitchen. And we want to know how big is this countertop. So is it too late? It's like, can we can we still measure or figure out how big this countertop is or what the perimeter is or what the area is? Uh, I let my students brainstorm. How can we do this? What can we do? And every time I have run this task, someone will say, we could use Dora to measure the countertop lengths and widths. It comes out when I allow them to do that uh, brainstorming on how we can figure out how big this countertop is. And so we can move forward with that and say, look at, okay, well, if we're going to measure in terms of Doras, well, how many Doras, you know, go up the side here in lengths? Uh, we can start to count. Before we do, I might throw one down like that and go, well, how many go across, up there? We're going to do some estimates. What's too high? What's too low? What's our best guess? Get our estimation skills going, our number sense uh, skills uh, flowing here. And then once we've got some too highs, too lows, best guesses out, uh, we can show them what the uh, the length will be in terms of doors. We're at 13, 14, 
15, and then not a full Dora. We've got like a Dora, a Dora body, but no Dora heads. There's 15 and a bit that kind of go up the length of that. But how many go across the width? Again, we can estimate uh, across the width and we get nine Doras across the width. And they can say, kids, like, what are we gonna do now? Like once we have the dimensions, they will wanna know like how long one door is. And luckily we have a little piece of measuring tape that we can use here to measure the Dora lengths. So we can say, look at there's so many centimeters uh, up to her shoulders, which is really important for uh, measuring uh, the, that the length because it, the last part was up to her shoulders. Uh, but now we can say like, what's the perimeter in terms of Dora's? So we can get her length by adding the the shoulder height and the, and the head height and we get a 9.5 centimeters. And once students know that, they can start to formulate a strategy on finding the area. And this is a beautiful part because some students will just add up all the way, how many doors go, go across. And again, the grouping is gonna come out of here. This power in grouping the doors together is going to become very clear to the students that that's a very, uh, a very, a very efficient strategy. But let your students work here and then see what they come up with. One student might kind of group it one way and another student might group it a different way. But then what you can do after is bring those solutions together and talk about that power and grouping. And you can start to formulate what might make this more efficient. Look, if we have nine doors across the width and then we have uh, 15 doors up on the length side, uh, but remember that it wasn't just 15. We had so many centimeters um, up to her shoulders. If we remember, there's about six centimeters there up to her shoulders. So we've got 15 doors and then six more centimeters. So this length is 15 doors and six more centimeters. Okay, we gotta add all this up, right? Like we've got a group, we, we've gotta use this power in grouping. And so we can show them on a number line and bring in our, our number line and our number sense along a number line to look at, uh, here's, here's what we're doing. We're adding up the perimeter. Um, but we've also seen there's a lot of power in grouping. So we can group the doors together. Uh, we can add those up. We can group the centimeters together. We can add those up. And we can see that we've now built a formula here, a simplified formula that's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more efficient than the just adding up a whole whack of Doras. And so we can use that formula with the value we found before of 9.5 centimeters for Dora's height and come up with a full simplified value for the perimeter. So that's, that's a task that can be really nice to kind of bring these ideas to the forefront so that you can formulate where the power of algebra actually needs to lie. And then we can follow up with some, some other uh, expressions that kind of extend this concept of using an, uh, this unknown value X or, or D for Dora's. We've already kind of built this idea of algebra tiles in so that we can start to bring those in and then uh, work with our algebra tiles in the future on next you know next step lessons. So those are three activities that I use in the same class period to bring out this idea of power of grouping and simplifying in algebra. I'm uh, I hope that uh, you uh, uh, get some value out of out of those activities. I'm curious uh, maybe there's activities that you are using that are just as uh, amazing that I've had. I've had a lot of success with those. Now, that activity is going to be built into our uh, Make Math Moments Academy. Uh, right now, it's not on our Academy database at the time of this recording. It will be brought into the Academy as a full unit uh, moving forward for algebra, but you're seeing behind me all the tasks we have inside the Make Math Moments Academy. And uh, you can uh, remember each task here, if I click on a task, each task here has uh, a spark kind of video, kind of like that Dora video. And then each task has a full teacher guide to walk you through every step of the way, show you possible solutions, and we give you the resources to make that all happen. Now, also the uh, day one, this is a five day unit that I'm showing you right now, but day one is fully open, guide, tab, everything. Uh, the, pre the next uh, days are, uh, two members of the Academy only. So if you want to subscribe or become a member of the Academy, 
Uh, you can always get 30 days for free by heading over to makemathmoments.com forward slash academy. And uh, you can join up and get 30 days access. And that's full access to everything, um, not just the tasks. That's also uh, all of the uh, other courses and and uh, learning activities we have inside the academy. So uh, hopefully this uh, this quick this can be a quick win for you in changing the way that you are teaching algebra and collecting like terms with your students. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe here over on, on YouTube or hit the bell over on Facebook so that you get notifications from us next time we share uh, videos to help you in the classroom. But uh, take care everybody and uh, see you next time.